Hey everybody, this is Josh here, the Great Beard of Green Beret. I'm here at the Pathfinder Gathering in Hillsboro, Ohio. Wanted to make, take a quick break and show you the video I wanted to release for you today but didn't get done in time, so we're doing it live. So anyway, uh, what I wanted to talk to you guys today about, if you've watched my channel for any length of time, you know that I am a huge, huge fan of the Silky Brand Saw. And this is by far, hands down, the number one folding saw on the market, in my opinion that I have found. So I kind of want to show you the ones that I've been field testing for a couple of years, which ones I've found to be the best value for the money, uh, which ones I carry and kind of win, and show you maybe a couple of uses for the saw that you haven't thought of yet. Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. So as always, take what you want, leave what you don't, and we appreciate the views. So when I'm going out, I think, you know, this, this small Pocket Boy 130 has probably been the most useful and probably seen the most use and this one stays right inside my tool roll I can't tell you the number of times where I wish I had a saw and needed one uh, just a little more robust than what's on a multi-tool and this one really fits the bill for your smaller chores. So I'm picking the size of the saw that I want to use I'll typically go with one-third of the blade length is about the size of the lumber I want to put away with that about the size of the stick that I'm going to be able to cut with that so this is about a two inch because you figure as I'm sawing I need to have some kind of room to move across the blade to actually get that sawing effect. So this is about good for a two inch piece. So a lot of what I'm doing, this is perfectly fine for. I'll typically carry this one in my tool roll. When I'm carrying something like a buck saw or I'm carrying this larger, uh, this larger big boy, the silky big boy, so that uh, I can use this primary, primarily for putting away firewood, but then I'll use this smaller one for those smaller tasks that this is a little bit overkill for. So to kind of show you the difference, this is the smallest Pocket Boy 130 that I carry. This is the largest Silky that I carry, the big boy. It's quite a big difference. And if I go with that same, right, let me put that away real quick. If I go with that same one-thirds rule, you know, I'm putting away probably four to five inch structural size material with this and a lot of firewood with this. Keep in mind, I can also just burn through the firewood. But a lot of times, this has come in really handy, especially up at the Adirondacks where you need a lot of firewood to get through the night. So that's kind of my, my smallest and my shortest. And like I said, if I'm carrying this particular blade or this particular silky and, uh, or a, uh, a buck saw, then I'm probably not gonna carry this. I'm just gonna have this little guy in my tool roll to back that up, all right? So those are those two kind of extreme outliers that I like to carry. I think probably the perfect combination that I have found is somewhere in between those two. And this is what I would carry on my belt if I was carrying like say a haversack kit, just a small five or 10 seats haversack kit. So this is really the combination that I would recommend to everyone who's in the market for a folding saw. Um, this particular silky is the Silky Gomboy. And this is a Silky Gomboy 210. And this particular one has gone through a ton of fat wood you can see here but it still goes through it like butter. So this is Silky Gone Boy. This is seven teeth per inch. So this is a large, considered large teeth. And another great feature of the Gone Boy since I've got it out and every other Silky actually is that it, it locks in different positions. So you get different cutting angles on it. So that's another reason that I really, really like the Gone Boy. Not to mention it goes through wood, kind of like butter. But the Gone Boy 210, and this is the large teeth, so I use that for kind of, you know, getting through wood quickly when I want to go through uh, and, and put away some lumber or cut structural material fast. Now this is a little bit too aggressive for crafts. Uh, so a lot of times what I like to carry inside that same sheath is a replacement blade, which is still a 110, or a, yeah, sorry, a Gomboy 210, but this one actually has 14 teeth per inch. So it's a lot finer tooth. And what's interesting about these is the Gomboy is really easy to switch those out. I can use the replacement blade as its own screwdriver right there, pop that off, replace the blade, tighten it back down, and it all stores inside this sheath right here. So I've got all of that with me in the field on a belt with a haversack kit. I think I'm putting that in back, so there we go. So nice leather sheath that I also got on Amazon. I'll put the links in the description for all of these. Now this particular sheath that I keep these in on my belt kit is from a company called Review Outdoor Gear. And that is available on my Amazon store. Like I said, I'll put the links in, uh, but 
if I were to recommend one combination, one folding sole to rule them all, it would be this one in this configuration. The Review Outdoor uh, Gear Leather Sheath, the Silky Gomboy 210 with large teeth, and then a replacement blade, which is another Silky Gomboy 210, but it's the fine teeth. So I've got this for my putting away of lumber for the night, and I've got this one replacement blade. Sorry. Got this replacement blade that I can switch out so I've got a finer tooth for doing crafts. That, I think, is the best combination. If you were to only own one Silky Saw, it would be this combination right here. Silky Saws come in two different versions. You've got the regular version, and then you've got a professional model. Little critter. You've got a professional model which has a thicker steel on it. Uh, a lot of folks were having difficulty with Silky Saws because it's a pull cut only. And what they were trying to do was push and pull cut with it like they would with a Baco. Uh, and it doesn't work that way. And a lot of times they would snap the tip off or they would bend the blade. Uh, I have had at least six or seven of these saws and been using them in the field exclusively for the past three years or so. And have yet to break one, yet to bend one, even with that big, massive, big boy as well. So understanding that it cuts only on the pull stroke has allowed me to keep these for three, at least three years in the field and never break or bend one. But they do make a professional series, which is uh, a thicker steel, uh, which I guess would be less prone to breakage, uh, but I think they are a little more expensive. Uh, just know that I've never had a problem with the regular, so I just stick with those. Uh, maybe if I ever break these, I'll replace the blades with professional ones. Uh, but up until then, I'm gonna keep rocking with the regular ones. Uh, so a couple things that folks may not think about, but these have an excellent 90 degree spine on them. So. You know, just like the spine of your knife, having a saw that has that, you know, you'll be able to do things like process bark and shake and shave, but it does a really good job in between the knots at least. Of scraping outer bark like off of a cedar to get tender or just debarking something so that you can use it for something else. It does an excellent job of doing that. So it makes for a great scraper. And because it makes a great scraper, just like a knife, it's actually an excellent scraper for your ferro rod. But I love using it for that. Uh, and then another thing that a lot of folks don't think about is for flint and steel fires. We know that we carry a high carbon steel knife so that we can use that in a, in a last uh, last ditch, you know, worst case scenario kind of thing to light charred material uh, and some uncharred materials if you know what those are. But uh, for example, let's say we're using char cloth for whatever reason we didn't have a striker but somehow we had uh, char cloth. Let's pause for a second and think about what a really isolated kind of event that would be to where you have char cloth but no other striker having said that you probably need some flint too it's pretty handy I got a little shard of flint we'll try to make this work but it actually works pretty well so I'll take my char cloth fold her up get all my gnarly edges going one way set it up on top of the flint and just use my silky as the striker. So that's if I happen to have that. If I've got some charred material that maybe I made with a bow drill fire, and I don't want to make a bow drill fire again. I want to use a flint and steel technique, but I don't have a striker, but I've just got a silky saw. Again, let's think about what an isolated uh, kind of situation that is, but more skill will always be better than less skill. So I've got my charred tin down here with my charred punk wood in there. Got my silky saw and a piece of flint. So I'm going to drive material off of this directly down into that and transfer that to a bird's nest. So with any luck, you'll get it in just a few strikes. One going. 
I can see it going right there. I'll go ahead and put that in the bird's nest. And for good measure, I'll take a few more pieces of char and put it right on top of that. Deer fly. Got him. One less. Fold that up. I'll start feeding it some air. Right there, you can probably see it in there going. Get that jar in there. Hold it up. So anyway, a lot of different uses for the silky saw. And again, that is my favorite folding saw on the market. As always, we appreciate your likes, your views, your shares, your comments, your questions. And until next time, hope to see you in the woods.